Hey, this is Jeff again with the Valhalla Adventure. We got some.com or e i g u i d e s e r v i c e.com. Want to talk about shortcuts and how there are a ton of them. Uh, people like to advertise shortcuts, secrets to success, um, all that kind of stuff. And there are, there are a ton of shortcuts. There's tons of things that when you first um, think about like, how do I find properties, right? One of the things that people might do is they might think, well, you know, I can put out bandit signs. I can put out little signs all over that say that I buy houses and get people interested in selling me their house, right? So for in Texas, for instance, that's a crime. You can't do that. You can't put out bandit signs. And so what people will do is they'll say, well, you know what? I'm only going to put them out on the weekend. That way they're not getting picked up by the bandit sign people that are paid by the county to pick up bandit signs. And just in case, I'll also get a fraudulent phone number um, so that when people call, it goes to that. And then there's no way associated with me. I can't really get the fine. Hmm. Interesting. That sounds like a lot like what drug dealers do to protect themselves. And I'm not saying that that it's the same thing, but it is breaking the law, and it is going out of your way to do things to break the law. And that doesn't really seem like a shortcut. It seems like a way to justify breaking the law in order to not have to do all the extra work to take that shortcut. I mean, in reality, if you move into a house, homestead that house, say I live here, uh, this is mine. You go out and you hire a bunch of trades. They do a ton of work on your house. And then you just decide to not pay them here in Texas. It's real hard to uh, to collect or do anything if the person is homestead of that house uh, as far as collecting in your contractor. So theoretically, a shortcut to getting your house that you live in fixed up is to uh, hire a bunch of people and then just not pay them. And then as long as you stay living there, you don't have to pay them because sure there's going to be liens and all that stuff on your property uh, but the reality is that you get to live in a house that's all fixed up that you didn't have to pay for so that's a shortcut right and that's there's there's some exemptions to that and of course you know that's crime if it's found out that you did it intentionally and there's some other things that go along with that but it seems like a shortcut people have taken it before there's the shortcut to, you know, taking a bunch of classes and, and thinking that you're an expert. But the reality is, is the shortest way to be good at something is to, to do it right the very first time. And if you mess up, redo it, make, you know, admit your mistakes, take the L and start all over again. And, and then, then you're really doing something. Because that's the shortcut. That's the shortest route to figuring out how to do something right is to do it wrong a, uh, a bunch of times, to try it. Now, you got to have a general idea of what you're doing. You know what I mean? Like, learning how to ride a skateboard, you need to know the wheels go down, the deck goes up. you got to balance on it, one foot forward, one foot back. There's some basic rules you got to know. So that aside, the fastest way to learn how to flip a deal is, or how to find a deal, is to get out there and just start trying to find a deal and try a bunch of different ways. You know, drive for dollars, um, go around to all your local real estate agents and, and drop off some business cards. They're gonna say, thanks, we'll put this in all the agents' boxes for you, which means they're gonna go in the trash. Um, you can do uh, mail outs where you do every door through the postal service where they send out uh, like postcards to every single address is cheaper than doing it other ways you can get lists of people that you know uh, are in foreclosure or, or have a bunch of equity all of these are potential shortcuts all of these are ways to get you but they're little tiny shortcuts they're little means to an ends type of shortcut where you're not breaking the law you're not doing anything wrong but just know you know like if you're driving for dollars you're gonna have to drive around a lot it's not really a shortcut I mean, you're gonna have to drive and do the work of driving around 
you get lists, you're going to have to go through all of those lists and figure out what's what within those lists. But there's nothing wrong with that. Doing that work of driving around, doing that work of going through those lists, that is the shortcut. Doing the work. Assuming or figuring, you know, well, I'll just pay a wholesaler or I'll pay someone who knows what they're doing to do all this for me. That's not a shortcut because you're, you're not going to learn the way that if you just, you know, make sure that there's the perfect deal that lines out for you and don't do anything until then. Is that going to be harder? Yeah. Are you going to have to look at a lot more deals? Yeah. But you can also, you know, wholesale some of that stuff along the way. You can, uh, uh, when I say wholesale, well, that's, that's something else we'll talk about. I'm not a fan of wholesaling and, and preaching or teaching about wholesaling. There's plenty of people that do that. There's nothing wrong with it. I don't think it's the place for a wholesaler. I mean, a, uh, a new investor to start. I think that, um, if you can bird dog for an active investor who's looking for properties and you can specifically work for one or two that you know are doing things and wholesale deals to them, that's cool. But I think if you bird dog a few deals first to those people, you know, get paid a smaller amount to let them kind of show you how they calculate the deal, that not only teaches you how to calculate the deal, but it also get you someone that's a guaranteed end buyer, right? So that now you can focus on finding deals and not necessarily have, having to worry about how to liquidate things that don't fit within your own criteria. And that's one thing that's real important. You, you gotta figure out what your criteria is and there is no shortcut to that. You know, it's not necessarily um, the things that you think you can qualify for credit wise or, you know, if you've done 15, 20 houses and you're like, well, yeah, but I don't feel comfortable doing an apartment complex. Well, yeah, logically that makes sense. It's an apartment complex, but at the same time, it's it's a roof, it's drywall, it's electrical, it's all the same things. It's all the same elements, just on a much larger scale. So the number square footage wise goes up, but from a managerial standpoint, it's actually easier. So the shortcuts usually and typically are putting in the hard work of doing it right, of going, getting the list, going through it, figuring out if it's worth your time because you'll never know otherwise and, and questioning those things don't, don't do me any good. It's like I will, you know, there was a very popular thing a while back to uh, do like a coat seal on bathtubs and countertops and all that and it's when I first started uh, contracting and I didn't have a whole lot of work going in a, a company that did that a lot. Um, offered to hire me to be like an assistant to one of the owners. And so I went around and I learned how to spray coat all these things for like a month. And I never went out on my own. I never did it on my own. I've, ne I've never done one since. Um, but whenever I see jobs where I see that that's done, I see how it's done wrong. I see what they could have done right. I see what they could have done to fix it. Because I actually have an intimate knowledge of that exact process, which... There is no shortcut to getting that. I had to spend a month being an assistant, which doesn't seem like a long time, um, but honestly, to do that particular project right, it's not real complicated. Um, it's just real specific on what you need to do. But the point is that I like learning those types of things the long way because it gives me an in-depth, intimate knowledge, which serves me and creates shortcuts in everything I do within the category of that knowledge forever. So sure, there's shortcuts and you know quick things, but now I'm at a point where I don't need to go get deals from a wholesaler or you know go beg at a group for extra deals or you know I don't even have to market at all. I, I do a little bit of advertising, a little bit of marketing that's free, social media, that kind of stuff. I'm not and I'm really not sure if I'm doing that because I need to be doing that because that's what businesses do or if I'm doing that um, just I don't know I don't know why I'm doing all of the social media to be honest I like giving out information um, but I'm I just because again I really don't know what I'm doing with the social media I started doing it because I know that it's a huge aspect of this business nowadays and that a lot of the social media accounts I see are very, very active and they have a lot of followers and I'm sure that there's, you know, tips and tricks and, 
hashtags that can be done. And I haven't spent the amount of time to get any better at it because that's not a big value add to me. But at the same time, I'm not trying to take a shortcut in hiring someone else to take over my social media. I'm not like buying followers because I want, I want to know what it is that I really know. How good am I really? If I start piling on a bunch of shortcuts to my social media and paying for ads um, and, and paying for promotion and, and up votes or whatever it is that you pay for, I don't know. I feel like that's taking a shortcut. And I, and I want to know if my success is based on my abilities to do this job in its entirety and all that it entails or or is it something where okay look I learned how to do the the spray stuff um, all over the tubs and countertops but I don't do it I hired out I know how to hang drywall tape and float most of the time I hired out if it's a little small patch job I'll still get out my toolkit once in a while but the point is is that all of these things compile the hard work, the effort that you do in each of these little things are just building blocks. So they ultimately wind up being something that makes it so that you have value and you can value add to projects. You get people contacting you about buying their houses, buying their apartments, buying their strip centers, partnering with them on RV parks and storage facilities and all that kind of stuff not based on a tv ad or you know something on the radio but because they know you because you're in the community because a friend referred you because the realtor that they're talking to said that they can make more money if you came in there and helped them so that all has taken me a very 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 long time the shortcut that I wish I would have taken is understanding the value and the work that I was doing more. Because a lot of the times, these things that I was like, oh, I'm doing this, I wasn't doing it because I wanted to learn the lesson. I wasn't doing it because I thought I needed to go through the process. It's literally because I was broke and didn't have any other options, right? Like the only way for me to buy a house and fix it up is if I did it owner finance. And the only way for me to be able to afford to fix it up is if I didn't have any bills so that means I needed to move into it right so I could afford all the bills in just one location and then I couldn't afford to pay anybody to fix it so I had to do all the fixing of it like all the labor part of it and I couldn't really afford you know top of the line materials so I had to be creative and you know go get reclaim and then and sand down floors and you know, take kitchen cabinets that were being tossed from job sites and figure out how to rework them and make them fit in my space and make concrete countertops. So I, for, I remember the first time I saw that was like, geez, 20 years ago or something, maybe 15 years, no, more than that, 20 years ago. Anyway, and I did concrete countertops, not because I wanted to be unique or whatever. It was literally my cheapest option. And I, the labor was incredible, but the actual amount of um, cost compared to all the other options was very, very low. So I went ahead and did the work, and now I know how to do it. I would never do it again. Um, oh, I'll say never. I might do it again. It wasn't that bad. But I think that overall, my message would be, to myself, the shortcut that I would give to myself if I could go back uh, to a younger version of myself is that the work, the hard work, the effort, the stuff that you're doing that you think you're forced to do because you're broke is actually the best thing that's ever going to serve you. Knowing how to replace the water pump on your truck because you can't afford to pay someone to replace it for you, well, guess what? As a result of that, if you're ever stuck on the side of the road and your water pump goes out, a little quick trip over to AutoZone and a couple of tools, and you could have that puppy swapped out in no time. Now, there is no shortcut. Like, sure, you can watch YouTube videos on the side of the road and all that stuff, but would you have the confidence to do it? Did you, did you know, hey, I can do this on the side of the road? I don't need to pay $200 to get towed somewhere and then do it myself. No, I can do it right here. That kind of thing is where the shortcuts in life getting someone else to fix it for you, you know, getting a tow truck when you're stuck on the side of the road. Those things are convenient and they're lovely. And I definitely suggest doing them, you know, if at all possible. Jeez, that sounds right. 
But the reality is the hard work, the effort, the struggle, the failures, the knuckle busting, the you know, plan that fails, shit, let's try this new thing, the map fails, shit, let's try this new thing, shit, this new fails, let's sleep on it, reevaluate it, come back tomorrow, fail, 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 fail. Eventually you get it though. And it doesn't even sometimes feel like an exciting, yay, I got it. What it literally feels like is, oh shit, done, thank God. I just need to move on in life and do something else. I'm tired of working on it. And that's fine though, but you did it. And that struggle is the shortcut. Because the sooner you just deal with all that of learning and knowing, the better off you're going to be. The more in control of your own life you're going to be the more in control of your own emotions, your own reactions, and those things are what ultimately makes you successful, is being able to look at everything as just a problem that needs a solution, and you're really good at solving problems because you've put in the work. Be blessed. Bless others. Have a beautiful day. Let the sun shine on you and stuff.